Welcome yes. to Triple Trouble. We are here at the company uh, Byteam Center. This is Andreas Lorenz. He is the man in charge at the moment, I think. I have some questions and we're going to have a little conversation about Byter as a company and why Byter is so special in the, in the world of archery. So, um, what, what makes Byter different to other companies in archery? Well, one of the main issues is for sure Werner Byter. Yes. who founded it. He was a special person, unfortunately he passed away, but he yeah. gave so much to archery and so much he, he, he was the company. So yeah. it's hard for us to continue, but we are lucky because we have great products mm -hmm. and we have great people continuing the strive he had to do the best possible products for archers. From, uh, from a lot of people I heard that Werner was some sort of a genius in his own way. He would never have said genius, he hated the word, but uh, he was just dedicated to what he did. And uh, you may see it on the product. Uh, we, he, he and we never replace a product. Yeah. We always try to do the best possible product for the archer. Saying that you make a product and then it stays in your, in your line of products always. Yes, we have still our first product, which was a knock 1814, direct fit knock for a X7 arrow is still available. Yeah. So the first product ever produced, even the knocking point, that we are still selling a good, um, is still available. Any biter product, any, that's important for the answers out there, any replacement part for any biter product is still available. That's cool. And does that mean you don't have any new products? Or We have had new products. Werner was a Vulcan. Yeah. Uh, after he passed away, we had to reset a little bit the company. Yeah. Now we have new designer, new development. And uh, we are working hard and uh, we hope by the end of the year to show you a new product. I'm excited for that. So uh, another thing about Bider is that everything is uh, local based, right? Yes. So maybe it's nice to go to these yes. uh, maps. So Bider is down here. You see we're close between Switzerland and France. This is the Black Forest. And we are located here. That what you see green is uh, Baden-Württemberg is the region yeah. and we can say that our products are made not only in Germany by the way are made in Baden-Württemberg. Yeah. Any biter accessory yeah. for archery is made in Dauchingen or has made with products that are coming within 120 kilometers radius. Yeah. So, so you're, you're very uh, into local economy and boosting the local economy. That's important. For us it's important. We know our products are expensive yeah. also because of this. But uh, I think uh, it's important to know where the products are coming from yeah. and uh, the people know that if they buy a knock from Biter, this knock has been produced where the pin is located. Yeah, you would say that Biter is a small company then, but you can see that there's a lot of pins on this map. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a world map here and then the European map here. Yeah. All of these pins, what do they mean? So here the pins are the dealers <laughs> available in Germany. Yeah. Here the pins in the European map are the European dealers that deal directly with us and then we have distributors in Europe which are dealing with all smaller dealers. Yeah. We also have here uh, the yellow pins. The yellow pins show archers uh, from nation or nations that archers have been in our center for shooting. The Biter Center that yeah. is, has been visited by you sometimes in the meanwhile. Yeah. And here we have a worldwide map. A worldwide map with the same thing, the yellows are archers from these countries have been in our center for shooting. The blue are the distributors in this and red are direct dealers we, we deal with in the world. Cool. These are hundreds of millimeters. So this is something that Werner was big into. Preci Very precise. Precision. Yeah. I mean, uh, the compound arrows was the last product he did. Yeah. It was his masterpiece, let's say, mm -hmm. in my eyes. Uh, even if the plunger that you use and most of you yeah. uh, top artists are I using. Think 95% of the World Cup field. They know it's a precise tool to work with. Yeah. And he wanted to do something for compound and he did something which is special because even if you see some screws you have not to unscrew anything to move it yeah and that's a huge thing but it won't it won't undo itself generally not <laughs> we had it but mainly there were people playing with the 
yeah. with the torque of these uh, screws. Yeah. They are preset from factory and they should not be touched. That's important. Yeah. And this allows you to have a movement. You see, you can move it with the VHA tool that we have uh, for our, our rest, uh, uh, compound rest. And just for the record, where do the VHA tools uh, get produced? 20 kilometers from here. VHA yeah. company is 20 kilometers from us. And here you see 0 0.01, okay, I can put 0 0.02. And then I turn, I start turning, and I move 0 0.6, 0 0.89, 0 0.9, one millimeter. I, so I'm, I now moved it by one millimeter. And the good thing, I turn it back, and it oop, immediately goes back. So there is no play. Yeah. So I can move it further, 0 0.56 to the other side, and then when I start moving, it's immediately moving back. Yeah. This no play is crucial because Where? you want to move it a millimeter, it moves a millimeter and it has a vernier scale on it. Yeah. So you can at the tenth of millimeter, actually at 0 0.05, you can have it move that precise. And yeah. so when you're doing a paper test or, or whatever you do, yeah. the test for compound to set up your bow, in the height and in the lateral uh, position, you can have it precise at 0 0.05 millimeters and, and re redo it. You can replace it exactly in the same position. Where did Beider or Werner Beider get all of this knowledge? Did he study for this or did he do he his self-study? Study, self-study, I mean he was a tool maker. Yeah. Uh, so his job was to do tools yeah. uh, for injection machines. Mm -hmm. And when he found a problem, he was thrilled. He yeah. was thr thrilled to solve problems. And uh, if he didn't know about something, he learned about something. Yeah. And that was in incredible. Uh, so the knowledge he was building all over the years made, uh, made actually the root of this company. Yeah. And uh, this root is still here if, even if he's not here. That's a good yeah. thing. We have a little uh, showcase in the Baito Center showing, for example, how products were developed. So, for example, when we started to do the string tool that probably you know, yeah. uh, it's a tool to separate cables or strings to start doing the serving to put the peep side in. Yeah. It started from a piece of brass. Is this handmade? That's handmade. And then we made it out of plastic yeah. to see how this design works on plastic. And then he started to do the mold to be able to produce it. Yeah. Same thing for other products. You won't believe it, this was the first prototype of the arrow rest. And then this is what is the final product. Yeah. So he tried to, do, to see how much can I do out of plastic what is the best combination between different plastics and between plastic and aluminum? And that's why at the end we have that product what we have now. And on the plunger, it's the same thing. This was the number one plunger. So it's similar. Yeah, you can see all of the similarities. But it's definitely not what is the final plunger nowadays. And this was the first, even in the weight, the first pre-production there were, this is the one of Romeo Frigo from, as you see, 1987. 1310 points was his result at that time. It was one of the first 1300 in Europe, the first in Switzerland. He's a Swiss archer. And he got this uh, plunger as well as Rick McKinney got one. Yeah. Uh, some top archers got this uh, uh, product which is weighting much more. Can I feel it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And it was M10 because it was for Talenta. Yeah. He was shooting Talenta bows at that time. Yes, and 1989, 1988, we have oh, 30 years of bite plunger. We should have a party. <laughs> 30 years of bite plunger. Ah, and this is the first knock. So this was the first prototype of the bite knock. <laughs> Interesting to see, it was symmetric. Yes because that's the selling point for Biter at the moment. Yeah, One of the selling points. This was symmetric because uh, after this, he made some high-speed film. Werner was one of the first doing high-speed film yeah. in archery. And he realized that the asymmetric knock 
would be much better for Ricoh vouchers yeah. because Ricoh voucher yeah, with the Mediterranean... You have Medita one above the arrow yeah. and two under the arrow. So you, the string is asymmetric. Yeah. So he changed the original design to be asymmetric. And then we started again when I came into the company to do a knock for compound because the D-loop started. And yeah. the D-loop is the only symmetric way to shoot yeah. uh, That's archery. That's why uh, I think some compound archers who shoot uh, uh, a single loop under the, under they the knock, they shoot knot. asymmetrical. Yes. And bare archers, generally, they are like made for it because if you are under yeah. the, the knock, you're, it's you're in any case. Really. So it's, the asymmetric knock is the bite to knock design, but originally it was a symmetric knock. Cool. And then you have some electronic stuff, some watch stuff, and some medical stuff. Yes, uh, these are products we produce for other companies. This was the first and big patent of Werner. Actually, the product he started with uh, to be uh, uh, self-made. Yeah, and that's a floating cog. Floating cog means that more cogs can engage to each other without noise. Yeah. Normally you hear that tick tock, tick tock, tick mm -hmm. tock, or click click. No noise. And the interesting thing, even if they're under pressure, they still turn. So even with shocks. Was this his idea or yes. was he just smart enough to make the tool for it? No, no. It's his idea. It was his first big, big patent. And it's, I can tell you, this part is in most trucks in the world. Yeah. Because there is a a tachygraph, a speedometer, which takes speed and time of driving. Yes. yes. Analog logically, we talk about mm -hmm. 40 more plus years ago. So every truck has to have this uh, clock in it yeah. to prove to the police that he You're was not, not driving, driving too, too much. much. Yeah. And this is in almost all of them. I think we can conclude that Bider is a unique company in many ways, with stories behind every single product. Their influence in archery is and always has been very big, and I think it's impressive that they don't make products for a year or two, but for a lifetime. As you may have heard in the video, they are working on some innovative new products, and we got the chance to see them, and we're really excited and most of all, very impressed. So thanks for watching, and thank you Andreas for having us. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, uh, subscribe if you want to see more and uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you for being here and uh, thank you for doing this uh, great reportage and if ever you want to see the Vita Center, just contact us. Thank you.